Good afternoon once again. Thank you for uh, joining us. On March 2nd, 1836, a group of patriots gathered at Washington on the Brazos to declare Texas independence as a nation standing on its own two feet. That proud and independent spirit has animated the Texas character for the last 179 years we celebrate Texas independence today. It's that same spirit that we are gathered here today to declare Texas independence from overreaching federal mandates like Obamacare. It's been over two and a half years since the U.S. Supreme Court decided in the case of NFIB versus Sebelius that it is the role of the states, not the federal government, to decide whether or not to expand their respective Medicaid programs as outlined in Obamacare. The 84th legislative session is now well underway, and the Senate Finance Committee has been conducting hearings over the past couple of weeks to contend with significant budget considerations that impact our state and every taxpayer. One of the largest cost drivers of our state budget is Medicaid. The cost trajectory and the current program is quite simply unsustainable. In fact, Senate Bill 2 currently provides 24 Point eight billion in general revenue funds just to keep the current program afloat. In order to keep cost under control and ensure a sustainable program, we must have the flexibility from the federal government to manage our own Medicaid in our state. Ever increasing federal regulations and mandates will only continue this unsustainable, irresponsible, and growth in spending. Chairman Charles Swartner will now elaborate further on how the federal mandates have impacted the state and he will discuss some of the flexibility that we need in much further detail in this letter that all 20 Republicans and I signed to the president. Chairman Swartner. Thank you Governor Patrick and thank you all for being here. Today as we celebrate Texas Independence Day and as the United States Supreme Court prepares to take up the case of King versus Burwell, the Senate Republican Caucus stands shoulder to shoulder with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick in reaffirming our commitment to the people of Texas that we will continue to fight overreaching federal mandates and demand the flexibility to reform our state's existing Medicaid program in a way that ensures its long-term viability. In a letter sent this morning to President Obama, the Senate Republican Caucus has outlined a number of key flexibilities centered on the conservative principles of accountability and personal responsibility, which we feel are paramount to the enactment of any truly cost-effective and sustainable health care system reform. Principles which allow Texas the independence to more effectively manage its Medicaid program and better serve its citizens. As most of you know, Medicaid is a jointly funded state and federal program intended to provide health care to some of our most vulnerable citizens, pregnant women, children, the elderly, and the disabled. Over the years, this broken but well-intentioned program has drifted further from its intended purpose and further still from those it was designed to assist. In 1989, the Texas Medicaid program represented 12 percent of the state budget. This year, that number is expected to exceed 29% of the state budget and continues to grow at a rate two and a half times faster than any other aspect of state government. The numbers of Texans served by Medicaid has simply skyrocketed from just over 2 million individuals in 2002 to over 4 million individuals today. As costs and caseloads have grown, the number of Medicaid providers has continued to shrink with only 34% of physicians now accepting new Medicaid patients. This rapidly increasing demand for services, combined with a rapidly declining pool of willing health care providers, is fostering the beginnings of, of a substantial crisis in the Texas Medicaid system. As the cost of Medicaid continues its upward climb, it places an ever-increasing strain and pressure on the Texas budget, diverting funds that would otherwise be used to support public safety, build new roads, and provide quality education for our children. It should be clear to all that this trajectory 
is simply unsustainable. Now, some would ask, what barrier stands in the way of Texas implementing the reforms necessary to get its own Medicaid program under control? And the answer, quite simply, is the federal government. Once we send our federal tax dollars up to Washington, they then return to us in the form of Medicaid funds that come complete with federal mandates and restrictions, gold-plated handcuffs that stand in the way of common sense, conservative reforms that could otherwise help contain these exploding costs. Solutions like health savings accounts, co-payments, and work requirements for able-bodied adults. These ideas have the potential to drive the costs down to preserve the long-term sustainability of the Texas Medicaid program. But without the appropriate flexibility from our federal partners, the problem will only continue to get worse. Despite these facts, some in our state, and certainly many in Washington, D.C., continue to call for an expansion of the broken and ailing Medicaid program. But to be clear, until we receive the kind of federal flexibility we're calling for here today, the kind needed to fundamentally reform Texas's existing Medicaid program in a way that preserves it for our most vulnerable Texans, any expansion of Medicaid in Texas is simply not worth discussing. Our focus as a state remains clear and centered on ways to rein in the cost of our existing Medicaid program, with the hope of ensuring that it remains capable of providing care to our state's most needy citizens now and into the future. We can all acknowledge that the healthcare challenges faced by the state of Texas are unique, and yet somehow we're asked to believe that the one-size-fits-all solutions crafted in Washington, D.C. will naturally represent the best path forward for Texas. But the truth is, Texans know what's best for Texas. This change must happen. It must happen now. And on Texas Independence Day, we say with one voice that Texas will lead the way. Thank you, and I'll be happy to take a question or two. Has the federal government said no to any of your block grant applications in the past? The federal government has been very... The federal government has very... Uh, has been very uh, unwilling to work with increased flexibility. That's why we are calling for increased flexibility to preserve the Medicaid program and make sure it's right for the citizens served, the taxpayers currently, and the future generations of Texans. Why has the state applied for the grant? We have done many things working toward increased flexibility, whether it's compact bills authored by Senator Colkers when she was a House chair, whether it's looking at more global payment waivers. The 1115 waiver is a good example of that, of increased flexibility, transformation, and trying to increase or decrease costs as well as allow for increased flexibility. We need more of that. Texas and all states need more of that to control the ever-expanding, exploding costs of Medicaid that you see there in the graph before you. Senator, One you other question? All, I'm sorry, Senator, do you worry at all that asking for some more of this flexibility might endanger the efforts to try to keep the 1115 waiver? No, absolutely not. I think all states are clamoring for federal flexibility in their Medicaid program. It is squeezing out public education. It is squeezing out enforcement, law enforcement. It is squeezing out higher education and development of infrastructure. It is, a, it is the keystone issue from a fiscal standpoint of the state budgets. Thank you all. I appreciate it.